Today I'd like to make a quick video to tackle one of the most frequently asked about questions in the Mac Pro community, and that is deleting the CPUs on a dual CPU 4.1 2009 Mac Pro. There are a number of great detailed videos on how to delid a CPU, and I'll be referencing one of them today. I'll provide a link to that in the video description. In this video, we will go over delitting using the VICE method, which I believe to be the safest and easiest method to delit a CPU. However, the main focus of this video is going to be on cleaning up the CPU dies and properly mounting the CPU after delitting. Believe it or not, the most challenging part of this whole process for a first timer is getting proper mounting pressure on the CPU. All right, so let's get started. The first step is to align the CPU with the vise. On the left side of the CPU, the green PCB should catch on the vise. On the right side, the metal IHS should catch. Be warned that pushing the wrong direction can damage components under the integrated heat spreader. To help protect the CPU, it's always a good idea to put some tape over the jaws of the vise. Carefully align the CPU with the vise and slowly turn. It takes a good deal of pressure, just hold on to the CPU and continuously turn until you feel it pop. Next up, we're going to carefully remove the bulk of the solder from the CPU die using a razor blade. Take your time on this part. You want to apply smooth, firm pressure. One small slip can damage components on the PCB or, worse yet, injure you. You don't need to get it perfect in this stage, you just want to remove the bulk of the solder. Something about like this is fine. Next up, we're going to rough sand the die. The specific grid of sandpaper you use isn't critical, somewhere between 220 and 600 for this stage. During this step, you're going to want to ensure that all of the solder is removed. Clean the die with some alcohol and a napkin, and then we're on to the final step. This step is entirely optional and has the highest risk and lowest reward of anything in this video. You can use a razor blade to carefully scrape away the adhesive left over from the IHS. If you choose to do so, be very careful not to damage pads or components on the PCB. At this time, we're going to fine sand and polish the die. Once we complete this step, it'll be ready for final cleanup and install. While this can be done using normal sandpaper, 600 grit or greater, I prefer to use these micro mesh pads. I start with 1200 grit and then follow up with 24 and 3200 to really polish it up nice. If you don't want to buy a set of pads, some 600 grit sandpaper followed up with some steel wool will do just fine. With our CPUs all polished up and ready to go, it's time to remove the old CPUs and do our install. The only tool needed to remove the CPU heatsink is a 3mm Allen key. Start by undoing all four screws in one heatsink in an X pattern, and then gently lift straight up on the CPU heatsink. In all likelihood, held on by thermal paste and with no retention mechanism to keep them in place, the CPU and black plastic spacer will come up with the heatsink. Finally, let's install our newly delitted CPUs. Begin by carefully inserting the CPU into the socket. There's no need to apply any downward pressure and be sure to line up the posts in the socket with the cutouts in the CPU. I would highly recommend not using the black plastic spacer that was used with the OEM CPUs. It can make proper mounting much more difficult and cause CPUs to run at a higher temperature. Apply your thermal compound of choice. In this case, I'm using Conductonaut by Thermal Grizzly. Now if you want to use liquid metal like I am here, removal of the black spacer is absolutely critical. This ensures that the die is able to make full contact with the heatsink. Liquid metal does come with some inherent risks, so I'm not going to outright recommend it here. However, in a stable stationary system like this, it works quite well. Now, carefully seat the heatsink onto the four posts, ensuring that the fan connector on the front right side is properly aligned. Next, tighten all four screws in an X pattern, hand tight. After we're done with that, we're going to go back around and just snug them up a bit, usually about a quarter of a turn. If you follow these instructions exactly, your system should boot first time and recognize all RAM in both CPUs. If you have issues with one or both of your CPUs running a bit hot, you can adjust tension on the effective side. Just gently snug them up a little bit more and ensure that you have firm, even pressure on all four screws. And that's it. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope to see you next time.